Good morning, everyone. I'm Eddie Pauline, and I serve as chair of the Worthington Community Relations Commission. The commission has been a key supporter of this event for many, many years. On behalf of the city of Worthington, the Community Relations Commission, and partner organizations, Worthington Libraries, Worthington Schools, Worthington Alliance for Black Families and Educators, and the McConnell Arts Center, I would like to welcome you to the 2022 Martin Luther King Community Celebration. Special thanks to Reverend Lou Siepel, Craig Kramer, and the staff and congregation of the Worthington United Methodist Church for hosting us today and providing the live stream services for this program. Although we cannot gather in person again this year, today's program will feature many of the traditional elements of this annual event, including music and remarks commemorating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The theme of this year's celebration is the future of the movement, the legacy of Dr. King. You will see this theme reflected in the comments and readings from the three Worthington School students that will participate today. We will now begin the program with the invocation from Reverend Siepel, and following the invocation, Larry Griffin will sing the first verse of Lift Every Voice and Sing. Thank you. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, find us this morning on our knees, way down on our knees for many a reason. First, find us there in our recognition of you as the one who made us, the one who sustains, and the one that renews our hope and our vision. Without your grace, we could not rise. Next, find us on our knees in confession. For while we confess our love for you, we also doubt your power to move us from strength to strength. Forgive our feeble forgetting, which saps our courage and blinds our eyes to the injustices of this world. Then, O oh Lord, find us on our knees for pure thanksgiving. For surely when we feel like no people, you call us to remember the power of being your people. Hear our thanksgiving, too, for the celebration and remembrance of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. His words continue to ring for justice, to challenge our nation's complacency, to stand against oppression and suppression, to release the captives and to make level the rough places. Grant us wisdom, renew our courage, restore our hope, revive our belief that justice can roll like an ever-flowing stream. Show us the way, show us the way. Lord, show us the way, amen. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Caleb Davis, and I'm a freshman at and I'm a, a freshman at Thomas Worthington High School. And today, I will be reading New Day's lyric, a poem by Amanda Gorman. May this be the day we come together. Morning, we come to mend. Withered, we come to weather. Torn, we come to tend. Battered, we come to better. To better. Tethered by this year of yearning, we are learning that though we weren't ready for this, we were ready by it. We steadily vow that no matter how we are weighed down, we must always pave a way forward. This hope is our door, our portal. Even if we never get back to normal, someday we can venture beyond it to leave the known and take the first steps. So let us not return to what was normal, but reach towards what is next. What was cursed, we will cure. What was plagued, we will prove pure. Where we tend to argue, we will try to agree. These fortunes we foreswore, now the future we foresee. Where we weren't aware, we are now awake. These moments we missed are now these moments we make. The moments we meet, in our hearts, once all together beaten, now all together beat. Come, look up with kindness yet, for even solace can be sourced from sorrow. We will re we re remember, not just for the sake of yesterday, but to take on tomorrow. We heed this old, sp this old spirit in a new day's lyric. In our hearts we hear it, for old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. Be bold, sang time this year. Be bold, sang time. For when you utter yesterday, tomorrow ye will find. Know what we fought need not be forgotten nor for none. It defines us, binds us as one. Come over, join this day just begun. For wh wherever we come together, we will for forever overcome. Thank you. Dr. King is one of the greatest heroes in the United States. He led large protests, marches, sit-ins, and boycotts for the equality of black people. When Martin Luther King was a child, he had many accidents. These included getting hit by a car, a baseball bat, and falling down the, dais the basement stairs. Fortunately, these accidents didn't hurt him much because he was always tough and he always got back up. This is also true for the work he did to improve life for black people in the United States. Even though Dr. King led with love, he was often hurt, got mean messages, was arrested 29 times, and even had his house bombed, but that didn't stop him. When he was young, his parents always taught him you should lead with love and not hate. Martin Luther King was often treated badly because of his skin color. He sometimes wanted to hate people who were mean to him. His mom and dad taught him that it's better to have more love in your life than hate. But this was just when he was a child. But he always remembered what his mom and dad said. He, al he also remembered that they told him you are as good as anyone. As he grew, Dr. King saw that black people were being treated badly and unfairly all over the United States. His dad was a preacher and taught Martin that God wanted black people to be free. Martin knew that his dad was right and ended up following his footsteps as a preacher. He taught people all about love. Dr. King helped us, and it, and it is our job to help him by spreading his message of love. Our world is a world who needs a lot of love right now. We can continue what Dr. King taught and showed us with his words and actions. 
It is hard to show love when others show hate, but Dr. King always did. I will do this by showing love in a room full of hate. I can help people when they need it the most. The only way to overcome hate is to have more love in our hearts than hate. Dr. King had a dream that his children would live in a nation where they would not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. His dream hasn't come true yet, so it is up to us to work to make it come true. It is possible to live in a nation where all people are treated fairly and have the same freedoms. We can do this by showing love and being the change that we want to see. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Hallie Craig. I'm assistant director and bassist of Urban Strings Columbus. We are a black youth orchestra originated in Columbus, Ohio since 2007 by our founder, Catherine Willis. We will be playing a few pieces for you today. Andante Festivo, Fire Cannon, Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen, Todo Praise, and Symphonia in D, all composed and arranged by black artists and composers. Thank you so much.
Hello, good morning. My name is Erin Blue, and I'm the Executive Director of the McConnell Arts Center in Worthington. We are so happy to be part of this year's celebration honoring Dr. King's legacy. At the MAC, we build pathways to experience the joy and wonder of the arts. And this week, we are opening a new exhibition in our gallery featuring the work of Lance Johnson. This new exhibition and additional programs are made possible by a grant from PNC Foundation. And with the support, we're able to offer many of the programs with this exhibition for free. Post No Ills is a celebration of urban art and culture. And I'm happy to have Lance with me here today to talk about his work and inspiration. Please join us for the opening at the MAC this Thursday at 6 o'clock, January 20th. You can also find our gallery hours and additional programs online at mcconnellarts.org. Uh, but for the more fun part, here's Lance to talk about his work. Thank you. Wow. Can I just say that I'm incredibly inspired by the music that I heard today and the words from the young people. I always say that the youth, it takes the youth to change the world. And I want you guys to keep inspiring and stay inspired as well. I'm so happy to be here to honor the legacy of one of my personal heroes, Martin Luther King, of course. Um, also, art for me is therapy. You know, not only for me as an artist, but for people that experience it, for communities as well. And art has always brought people together through culture, um, across cultures, language, and religions. And I hope that any, all of you guys get to experience the art at McConnell Art Center. I'm excited to share this work with you all. And thank you for having us here today. Appreciate it. My name is Cameron Smith. I've been asked to speak on the future of the movement and offer insights um, from a youth on the future of the youth. As it stands, I think the future of the movement looks bleak. Mine and future generations will have matured in a world full of panic and catastrophe, where the impediment of our rights, no matter how grievous, will not be our greatest concern. The constant news of violence and disease, blaring from any and every device in sight, has become white noise to those that listen and has instilled a code of ignorance is bliss in everyone else. I fear that I and my young black peers have been desensitized to the hostile world that has raised us, and that this apathy has fostered a mindset of defeatism. Many will ask, why worry about discrimination in my city when before long it may be swallowed by the rising ocean? Why worry about gun violence and, and in my city when a new viral pathogen may take my life first? Why should I concern myself with mass incarceration domestically when there are famines, droughts, and genocides abroad. When there are so many causes to fight for, why should civil rights be the most important? Dr. King's generation could feel the seats in the rear of the bus, and they could taste the water from the colored fountain. Their obstacles stared them in the face, and they had no other choice but to push back. Today, our obstacles are less tangible and don't provoke us to action the same way they once had. Between those who realize the futility of our efforts and those who have chosen to focus their efforts elsewhere, and those who have numbed, blinded, and distracted themselves from our plight, there will be few left to take up the fight. But they will fight nonetheless. They will fight, and they will march, and they will scream with the same vigor of our founders in hopes that in time, their efforts will bear fruit. But our enemies, too, shall continue to fight. And unfortunately, there appears to be no end to their creativity. They've discovered that in a world dominated by information, by spreading misinformation, our cries for change and awareness fall on deaf ears, that by infiltrating peaceful protests and turning them into riots, they lose their potency. By crippling our postal system and closing polling places, we have no traction to push for change. It seems as though Dr. King's brilliant blueprint will have failed the few of us left that stayed. So what is left to do? With numbers swindling and the enemy's knee on our necks, what repost do we have? How can we, the movement, survive in a future while copying the past? 
It is clear to me that the only way to survive in an evolving world is to evolve with it. How we evolve, only time will tell, but I offer my ideas. Making a common enemy of the causes that divide our attention may serve to unite us. For when a nation fights together and stands against a greater peril, our differences and inequalities fall to the wayside, and we become brothers in arms. When the world's wrath is scraping at our nation's walls, we must choose to show those who wish to oppress us and those who stand idly by that our only hope is to join hands and that our shared interests outweigh our differences. Perhaps our quality will only come when we've joined forces with greater numbers of those that we once opposed, and that those who remain and attempt to hinder our rights can no longer hide their misdeeds and trickery among the blind eyes and turned cheeks of their ex-compatriots. But we cannot know for certain, and that is not my choice alone to make. What is certain is that the time for sit-ins and freedom rides has passed, as it appears diligence and perseverance alone can no longer sustain our movement. I will, I will echo what many have said before me. It is time for change, but not of our world, of ourselves. A change in tactics, a change in strategy, and a change in mindset. The generations that are the future of this movement must decide how we will evolve, for if we do not adapt, we will not survive. Thank you. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody he is trapped. Christian heart, if I can bring back beauty to a world abroad, if I can spread love's message that the Master taught, then my living shall not be. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall
Chatter with the angels, sun with the morning, chatter with the 
I hope everyone enjoyed the event today, those here in person and those watching online. Special thanks again to our speakers and artists who made today very meaningful. As we close, I wanted to say a few words about how we can continue to honor Dr. King throughout the year. The Community Relations Commission offers a variety of opportunities to stay engaged in the process of building a stronger, more welcoming, diverse, and equitable community. We encourage you to follow the CRC and participate in our programs like our Good Neighbor Award, Community Sea Grant Program, and other initiatives. We realize that real change comes from a good mix of programs and policy changes. The CRC's work will be guided by one of Worthington's vision statements. Worthington is a diverse and equitable community. We will work on specific programs and initiatives that honor and celebrate our diversity with regular cultural events and multicultural education, such as we did today with this event create conditions that increase the diversity of our city to better reflect the racial and ethnic composition of our region. Proactively identify, evaluate, and address policies and practices that negatively affect underrepresented populations. Create opportunities and remove barriers for people from a wide range of ages, abilities, and income levels to live in our city implement policies and foster inclusive environments that increase diversity in public employment, business ownership, and community leadership. Stay tuned for more information on how to engage as we work with city leaders, community members, and other community partners in this work. The city's website offers more information about the, the CRC. In fact, we're actually seeking another member of the Community Relations Commission. If you're interested, you can apply on the Boards and Commissions website uh, at, at, the city's, uh, at the city site. Uh, so I encourage you to do that. Thank you all for today. Thank you again to our host, artists, speakers. Uh, enjoy your afternoon. <laughs>